Hey guys, uh, so today I want to talk about something on supplements and protein bars. So I've been following a keto diet for a while um, and I wanted to test a few supplements or protein bars uh, and see how they affect the blood glucose and ketone levels. Uh, so quite a common thing is, especially when you work out, so you're physically active, you always want to have a protein bar or like a snack on a go. Um, and there's quite a few um, full of sugar, so pumped of sugar, but then you also got some of the sugar-free uh, protein bars. Some of them are a little bit better, some of them are worse. They have different ingredients, uh, different ratios of uh, sweeteners. And today I want to review or even just test it um, like for scientific purposes really. Um, it's how one of the Quest bars, raspberry, is going to affect my ketone and blood sugar levels. So what we're going to do today is start with uh, early in the morning I didn't have much food I had peanut butter cookies that are homemade and I had my Keats coffee I'll add a link below um, to how to make one uh, so for now what we're gonna do to start with um, we're gonna measure my ketone levels like ketone levels with on call meter just to see if I'm in ketosis at all and then we're gonna also measure glucose levels. What we're gonna do after that, we're gonna do every half an hour, I'm gonna measure my ketones and glucose levels. So the idea is it to see if the protein bar I'm gonna have today with a cup of coffee, uh, affect my ketone levels, make it better or worse, and more importantly, if it's gonna affect my uh, glucose levels in the blood. So let's have a look, let's start with the ketone strips. Never like this part. I think you get used to it, but you don't. So I have to get one of the ketone strip, get a bit of blood out. And I go a little bit of a drop and get a reading. So my ketone levels 0.6 minimal. Okay, so that's reasonably good. Um, I've been doing keto for a while, and that's another thing when you get used to ketosis. Um, your ketone levels aren't as high as you become more efficient um, a lot of people think that having a high ketone levels is better but it's not necessarily the case uh, high ketone levels so let's say if you test it with urine strips uh, it may just be saying that you know you're wasting a lot of ketones and it's being excreted through your urine uh, but once you get a bit more keto adapted uh, the levels decrease uh, ketone strips may not be showing that you're in ketosis or at least a very low levels of ketosis um, so anything above one really and under 1.5 is good so don't worry about it too much okay now we're gonna go for glucose try not to get my blood everywhere okay got a glucose strip in using the same finger to draw the blood get it in 4.7. Again, I've noticed my own glucose levels are always quite stable. Even if I'm in deep ketosis, had no carbs at all for days, uh, my glucose levels usually maintain about 4.8 millimoles. Okay, so that was the first reading. Next one, we're going to go for the actual bar. See how it tastes, see how it feels. I usually like it for a coffee or any other hot drink. Just find it. I just like sweets with a drink. Okay, so looking at the Quest bar, again, you can see it's low sugar, high fiber, gluten free. Uh, so, what a flavor we've got is white chocolate raspberry. Straight away says seven grams of net carbs. If you look at the back, we've got per one bar, which is 60 grams, we've got uh, nine grams of fat, which is not too bad, eight grams of carbs which you would say, oh, that's quite high. But then at the same time, we've got only one gram of sugar, one gram of polyols, which is mainly every fruit at all. Uh, and then we've got a lot of fiber, which is 14 grams. So uh, what I like about Quest Bars is they always have loads of fiber compared to any other bars. So we're gonna review that later. Uh, so it gives you a different taste, uh, a different texture. And at the same time, they don't use as many sweeteners in this. Uh, but yeah, so I think the main sweetener is every fruit at all. Uh, they also got sucralose and steviol glycosides. Uh, what I like about them as well is that they actually have dried raspberries. So it's not just a flavor, 
it's actual raspberries in there. Uh, yeah, let's give it a go. Also, it's got 20 grams of protein. So as I said earlier, if you're working out and you're on keto and you want a snack on a go, it's quite a good snack to have in a packaging. There you go, that's what it looks like. You've got little pieces, uh, whatever biscuit tea type of thing it is. Let's give it a go. So, it's slightly different from other bars. Usually you get what in fitness protein bars, you usually get kind of a lion bar type of a substance. This is not too bad. It's quite sweet, you can tell. Chunks of what I would say almost like white chocolate. This is white cookie, so it's quite nice. You can, eat, you can also feel little seeds from raspberries, which is nice because it only shows you that they actually use raspberries in a bar. And it's not just a sweetener. Okay, that's really good. Hmm. So for the research purposes, again, morning, I had no food, just almost fast. Then I had a pizza coffee again. I'll, I'll link up a video if you want to make one yourself. But it's mainly a tablespoon of coconut oil, a tablespoon of MCT, 25 grams of butter, and just a black coffee. With this bar now, I'm just having a black coffee as well. I'm going to set the timer for half an hour. I'm going to test my my levels of ketones and glucose every 30 minutes. I'm going to do that for a total of two hours and see what it comes up as. So we ideally we want to see ketone levels staying the same or increasing and glucose staying quite low, but we'll see how it goes. All right, also what I want to do is look at uh, Quest Nutrition and their bars. Let's see what they say, what the company is about. Look up some of the sweeteners that we're going to be consuming. Okay, so if you go on um, Quest Nutrition website, we've got white chocolate raspberry. Slightly different, um, but looking at the reviews, we've got fairly decent reviews, four and a half stars on the website. So it's slightly different. So again, it says 20 grams of protein, five uh, gram net carbs, so a little bit lower than actually the one I have. Even the, even the outside of it is slightly different. As I said, they changed the, changed the packaging, but it's still the same thing. We're looking at one gram of sugar, 15 grams of fiber. Again, very similar. It's an American company, which is not available in UK. It's only the three shops. Um, so again, looking at nutritional facts. Calories from fat, 70, 70 calories, eight grams of fat, very similar again. Uh, looking at total carbs is 22 grams. Uh, dietary fiber is 15. Sugars again, same as on the one I'm having, one gram. Erythritol is two. Was on the one I'm having is saying it's one gram. So one of the main ingredients obviously is protein, weight, isolate. But they also have this uh, soluble corn fiber, which is quite uh, unusual here in UK. So, so soluble corn fiber can be used uh, in foods, drinks, um, it's been available on the US market from 2007. Again, so if you're reading about it, there's quite a few physiological benefits. Uh, there's quite a bit of science done behind it on both human and uh, animal studies. Uh, so you're looking at relaxation and prebiotic effects and all that. Uh, however, it's not raising um, glucose levels, or it's not supposed to uh, raise blood glucose levels uh, for humans and both animals. Uh, and it passes your small intestine and just comes out nice and clean. Well, not really clean. Um, but there's no side effects as such. Obviously, they just tell you, you know, be, be aware that increasing the amount of dietary fiber will, you know, change your bowel movements and, you know, you'll probably defecate a bit more, uh, which is, just makes sense because it's fiber, so it passes through. Um, but yeah, if, if you want a bit more research, look behind it. There's quite a bit out here on fiberfacts.org. Again, the next one is Erythritol. Uh, some people like it, some people hate it. Uh, it's really just like a sugar alcohol. Um, a really good one on uh, Healthline, if you read it through. The guy talks about it, uh, you know, the benefits, the side effects. So the benefits of it is that it's still as sweet, hasn't got as many sugar 
uh, calories. So compared compared to calories of table sugar, erythritol has got only 0.24 calories per gram, where sugar has four. It doesn't spike the uh, glucose and doesn't affect insulin levels. Um, it is safe, uh, or some of the studies shown is safe. However, it's got some side effects. So if you overdose, overdose. If you overuse erythritol, uh, the side effects just literally you're gonna have the shits. Um, it really, it really affects the digestive uh, tract. Uh, so if you do it too much, again, uh, I think it was mentioning here that 90% uh, of it gets absorbed, uh, but 10% of it is ingested and goes through um, your colon, and it may affect you know the way your uh, your bowel movements. Uh, may reduce the risk of heart disease, I wouldn't go into that much uh, because again, the studies aren't great. The next one again, so we're going into the other thing they use is stevia and stevial glycosides. And if you go on NHS website as well, uh, they deem that stevia is quite safe to use. Um, the only thing about stevia, you can't overuse it because it's got a bitter aftertaste if you use too much of stevia. Uh, but erythritol is not as bad as stevia in, in regards of taste. You see, I quite like Quest Nutrition and their story. Again, they decided to make a protein bar. There's not a packed of sugar, it's something different, it still tastes nice. This is what you get of uh, healthy bars. They don't always taste good, but they claim to be very good for you. So, what they decided is to do both make it healthy and tasty. So from 2010, they've been doing quite a lot. If you go into the products, they have loads to go home. They do pizzas, they do waffles, you know, all kinds of stuff. So Quest, Quest Nutrition is a, a good company, I believe. They focus on that and, you know, they hone on their craft, keep working on it. Again, if you go to their story, it only shows that They've been, you know, keeping improving it where you can. You know, working through 2010, 11. You know, they keep on, keep on going. They keep on coming out with new flavors, new products, which I like. Well, I had a whole bar empty. I'm gonna finish my coffee. Where we've got about 20 minutes left till the next uh, ketone and glucose uh, measurement. For now, I'm gonna just go stay a little bit, uh, get back into it. Once we're done, uh, we're gonna summarize what happened and if it changed, and maybe a bit of feedback on the taste of the bar. All right, see you in a bit. Okay guys, so last measurement of ketones and glucose. So far it hasn't been so bad. There were quite a few interesting uh, results. Pre-measurements we had um, 0 0.6 millimole of ketones. Um, that has been two hours since. And the glucose when we started was 4.7. Then the next measurement a uh, half hour was uh, 0 0.5 of ketones. At an hour it was 0 0.5. Uh, hour and a half we dropped to 0 0.4 and we'll see what it's going to be now however when it came to glucose we had uh, 6.3 increase in glucose which was interesting a uh, half hour then an hour it was 4.9 dropped down again it has risen to 5.1 at uh, hour and a half so this is going to be the last measurement so i'm going to see how it goes so start with the key terms again let's just change the chips um so again for the research purposes I uh, kept it, uh, didn't eat any food throughout um, since I had my Quest Bar, white cookie, so yeah, white cookie, raspberry, uh, and a coffee. So since then, I haven't eaten anything, just made my lunch, late lunch, keto style. So now I'm gonna take the last measurement for the glucose and ketone. So the first one, we're gonna start with ketone. Strip. Let me know, guys, what kind of uh, monitor you use. Again, I'm, I'm using Oncall GK Duo. All right, ketones stayed at 0 
Punch that in on an Excel spreadsheet. Now let's see if the glucose has gone up or not. It's the last reading. So again, I want 4.7, 6.3, 4.951, and it's back to 4.9. So it's quite an interesting result. Um, one thing I don't want to say uh, the glucose went super high, it was fairly low. Ketones weren't affected as much. I need to take into consideration that I wasn't doing anything as well. Uh, so I was just purely just watching some YouTube videos, doing some work on a laptop. So nothing major, no, no major movements or activities. Uh, so in regards to ketones and glucose, I think it didn't have a huge effect on it. It was quite interesting that it went up and down, up and down every half an hour. Uh, but overall, glucose stayed quite low and the ketones were still similar level. It dropped down a little bit, which is not a great result. Um, but at least it's not a protein bar that would kick you out of ketosis, which is great. Uh, so it'd be interesting to compare it to something very sugary, which would clearly kick me out of ketosis. Uh, but we're going to do that later, compared to any other brands. In general, Quest Bar, I quite like it because it's not just filled with uh, sweeteners. It, it uses, as we talked about, corn fiber. So that's quite interesting, gives it different texture, different taste different flavors. Um, it'd be interesting to try other flavors as this uh, protein bar had seven net carbs, uh, whereas I'm pretty sure others like chocolate brownie and all have uh, four net carbs. So it'd be interesting if that would affect the glucose levels. Uh, okay, so the next time we're gonna try and compare it to any other protein bars uh, that are low sugar um, and see how that affects it. So guys, let me know what you think of this protein bar. It's, it's usually fairly expensive. Um, here in UK, it can be about two and a half pounds. Uh, if you can find a good deal online, it could be about two pounds per bar. Very rarely, Quest Bar um, can go down to 170 per bar, but that's, you know, if you find like a super good offer. So it's not a cheap protein bar, but it's low in sugar. The results we got today could be purely individual. I don't know, uh, but this is what I found today. Uh, so we're going to compare it to next time we're going to use a phd bar uh, so we're going to see a very similar possibly taste or flavor and see how that tastes as this quest bar was actually quite good with a cup of coffee if you're not a fan of sweets maybe a little bit too much uh, but overall it was a really good bar i look forward to testing any others please suggest if you're interested in any other protein bars uh, be considerate because i'm here in uk and in some of the american brands we may not have but I'll try my best to get as many as I can, test it, do some research. If you can do the same thing uh, and measure yourself, how the Quest Bar will respond to your body, uh, that'd be very interesting. But for now, keep me posted, comment, like, share, whatever you need to do. Uh, but here was Tom, thanks and see you later.